Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today I am working on an MPU board from a WPC-89 system. This is a Doctor Who game that uh, the computer or the whole pinball machine was just completely dead. It wouldn't boot up. So I'm going to go over some of the processes that I went we're um, trying to diagnose what's wrong with the board. This is an ongoing process. So basically, I've taken my PC power supply here, as you can see, which uh, in another uh, video I did, uh, I showed how to hook it up with a Bali 35. So in this case, I'm powering it up to this WPC MPU board that I've taken out of the machine so we can actually diagnose it on the bench here. Um, Instead of just using jumpers, what I did was I actually created my own little cable here. And it's pretty simple to do. You can go online and see pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is a key, um, 4 and 5 are 5 volts, and then 7 is uh, a uh, 12 volt. So I wired them up. You'll see this, these wires here for an external battery pack that's, that's off camera. Um, so that we've got power to it, so we can see it. So on these MPU boards, there's these diagnostic lights right here. You'll see D19, D20, and D21. And uh, what's supposed to happen is when you turn it on, uh, 19 goes out and 20 blinks a number of times, and then uh, 21 stays on. And when there's something wrong, 19 will stay on if it won't even boot at all, and I'll show you. So we're going to we'll put power into the machine, you'll see. So what's happening here is 19 is on, 20 doesn't blink at all, and 21 stays on. So what's happening is there's this watchdog circuit called a blanking circuit, which um, doesn't, doesn't signal the machine to turn on the high-power solenoids until the computer is booted up for, for safety reasons. And um, so in this case, it's not booting up. It's not even getting past the point where it's telling it, okay, you can turn on the, the coils. So there's a couple of possible causes of this. Uh, bad ROM, bad CPU, or bad ASIC chip. That's this chip right here in the middle, this big, long 40-pin, or more than 40-pin, 70-pin or something like that. I think it's 80-pin, yeah, 20 per side or something like that. Anyway, it's, there's a lot of pins, this big, square, obnoxious thing. They call it an ASIC, A-S-I-C chip. So, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, obviously, you want to kind of just take a look at the board right off the bat and see if you see anything obvious. You see anything cracked. You see any damage from the batteries or anything like that. In this case, we don't see anything. So... One of the things you can do is re try to reseat this chip here. Now there's a special tool you can use. This is a this is a chip puller for that. And what you do is you, you put this at ends like that. You make sure it's nicely seated, and then you just kind of pull, and it it pops the chip out nice and neat like that. And so that's one way you can you can reseat the chip. Check to make sure all the connections look good. In this case, I like to uh, use a little contact cleaner. Make sure that's thoroughly dry. Obviously, don't do that with the power connected to it. Don't do that. Um, you want to be very careful putting this thing back in. You let that thoroughly dry. Kind of a little contact cleaner. So. We'll set this right in, make sure it seats nicely. It is possible to put this thing in the wrong way, unlike other chips where there's like, you know, a, a key or something. Um, so you so you should pay very close attention to how it's oriented in the thing. And you just push it and it goes right in just like that. So that's one thing you can do. You can, you can pull this chip and reseat it. Make sure you use a tool. It is possible to use like small jeweler screwdrivers, but it's really, really hard to do it. And you can damage the chip as well as the board. 
So you want to definitely use the right tools. Then also you can check the ROM chip and see if the ROM is damaged. Now what I did in this case was I pulled this chip up and I like to use a tool like this. This is a chip extractor. It's a really nice strong uh, kind of prying thing. And it's better than those ones that you pull. So you can kind of get underneath the chip and you can slowly lift each side little by little and then pull the chip off. Now I have an an EEPROM burner and uh, I what I did was I put this in that and I read it and verified that I could read it without any errors. Then I loaded in the original Doctor Who ROM that I could download off of IPDB and I did a verify against the chip and everything was okay. So I didn't burn a second ROM chip um, because I just verified that chip so I have every reason to believe it's probably pretty good. And then this right here is the, the CPU. This is a 6809 processor. Um, this is another chip that these rarely go ba bad, but uh, you know, checking them and checking the connections and making sure everything is nice and tight is important. Um, what I did in this case was I had another Doctor Who, so I started using deductive reasoning right off the bat. So first thing I did was I took this board and put it into a known good machine and it wouldn't boot up. So I knew something was on the board. Then I started taking the chips and swapping them from a known good machine into this. So I took the ASIC chip off that, throw it in here, it wouldn't boot. Did the same thing with the ROM and the CPU and uh, still no pro still wouldn't boot. So you can go online. There's a couple of references uh, online where you can look at more detailed diagnostic procedures where you can start checking the signals coming from different pins on the board, which is advisable. You can use uh, a logic probe to do that. You can also use multimeters if they've got the right settings. You can check for uh, signals going back and forth on these uh, data lines and the address buses that are coming around. Uh, so where I'm at it with this is um, we were just ha it, it just seems like it's just dead. So you'll turn it on and it sits like that. Now can't seem to get it. Every once in a while it would blink, but it's just it's not booting. Another thing you can do while it's on is you can you can try to just touch the. Uh, the chips and see if there's like a cracked solder joint or a broken trace. Sometimes you might be able to get it to behave differently if you flex the board just a little. In this case, no luck. It just seems dead. Don't know what the problem is. It could be any combination of these chips. It's hard, it's hard to tell. So this is where like somebody who's got a test bench and is much more familiar with the, the details of this stuff would be better suited um, there's a lot of very fine traces on this board. Um, this one, this one is not one of the worst ones to work on, but if you're not pretty experienced, this is a good scenario where you might want to send it out. Now you can get this board for two hundred fifty dollars if you can find it. A lot of times it's been sold out lately, but um, you can get a replacement board. But I think what I'm going to do in this case is I am going to try to see if I can replace this RAM. This is another thing that you can do. You can you can remove this chip, which is the only chip that's actually not, you know, the important chip that's not socketed on the board. But this can be replaced with a non-volatile RAM, making the whole battery thing obsolete. So what I'm going to do is I am going to swap out this RAM chip and see if that's the culprit. Normally the game is supposed to tell you when it's a RAM error, but if there is a problem, it could still possibly cause creep it from booting. So I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity and work on desoldering that chip very carefully and seeing if uh, swapping that out. I've got the memory chips on order, both the non-volatile RAM and the regular chips. So what I will do in the meantime is I will remove this chip and I will socket it and see if that gets us any closer. When the chip comes in, we'll throw it in and see if it boots up. If it doesn't, then we'll have to get more deeper into 
analyzing some of the signal paths on the thing. But before I even decided to do that, I checked a lot of the standard stuff to make sure that there was signals and there was voltage going on the different chips, and, and there were. So, kind of a little bit boggled. It could be some kind of broken trace somewhere in between here, but looking at the back of the board, it's very clean. There's there's no no acid damage anywhere on it. It hasn't been fiddled with. It's a very good, clean board. So, this is another one of those enigmas, and sometimes you come up with something and you just don't really know what's going on with it. So, um, in this case, I'm doing this for a client, and they're willing to buy the new board. But I said, hey, let me, uh, let me see if I can figure this out. You know, I know you want the board. They want to get their game up and working as soon as they can. Um, I said, you know, give me a week to play around with this before we order another board, because I'd like to see what I can do. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going um, to pull this chip out, and uh, I'll probably do a separate video just on that, because this is, a, this is another way of upgrading your machine. Ideally, you don't want to even consider that unless the MPE board's completely working, because then you know if you make mess something up, this is where it is. Unfortunately, since this game doesn't boot, if I replace this chip and it still doesn't boot, then we know it may have been someplace else, or hopefully I won't have messed this up. I'm going to be very careful working on this thing because there's lots of tiny, tiny traces. So when I desolder this, I'm going to I'm going to be very, very careful about checking continuity.